for selling your soul line. You're on the air with us. Hi there. Um, yeah. Uh, September 20th, 98, I wrote a thing out saying I'd sell my soul for a million dollars and that I'd be willing to end my life after 10 years with that money. On the 28th, I won the lottery of 1.2 million. And now the time is coming close to the end. I've pissed all that money away and I'm just a little bit scared right now. why you're here. I'm gonna sell my soul to the devil, what else? It's Hollywood, I wanna be rich. I wanna have everything. My name is Chris. My name is Matt Swinford. My name is Sarah Caples. Uh, my name is Kai. My name is Peter Hansen. AKA The Dark Fool. I'm a fashion stylist and I'm here to sell my soul to Satan. I answered the ad on selling your soul to Satan because I have some aspirations in life. I wanted to marry a nice guy and I wanted kids and a happy lifestyle, a comfortable lifestyle. I wanted to have a styling business and I have all those things and I'm really happy, thanks God. But the material things and the level of monetary gain that I'd like to see for my business aren't, that part isn't coming through fast enough. answered your ad out of curiosity mostly, but also because at this point in my life I want some assurance that I'm going to succeed because I've come too close and lost it in my life, in my career choices, and now I really just need to ensure that I'm going to succeed and that's the end of it. I answered the ad because I'm definitely intrigued about the entire subject matter and doing it on television. What is your price? What is my price? Yeah, because when you sell something, it, it's a transaction. What is your price? My price for selling my soul to the devil is wealth and power. Infamy. Damn. Maybe have my own reality show. Success in everything I've ever worked for. Absolute respect from people everywhere I go. And I want to meet Janice Dickinson and Donald Trump. <laughs> that would be the price. Why would the devil want your soul? I think the devil would want my soul mostly because I really am a good person. Satan would like my soul because I, like him, have learned to stand alone and be my own God. Why would the devil want my soul? I think because I have an innate ability to talk other people into following me down in, in a handbasket on a path to hell. He might like me because I'm a crowd gatherer. I'm very entertaining to, uh, to torture. I'm very entertaining when I'm in pain. I think Satan would want my soul because the way I learned it in Catholic school is Satan wants everybody's soul. That's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Because you're hot. They scared to lose their fucking house. Or they scared to lose their record deal. I sold my soul to the devil. I know it's a crappy deal. Lisa came with a few toys like a Happy Meal. If I can go back, I never would have rap. I sold my soul to the devil, I'll never get it back. I just want to leave this game with level head intact. Imagine going from being and knowing to seeing everything up and all you did was just grow up and seeing it's fucking crazy. Cause all I wanted was to get paid to the life. I wonder, can you save me? I can't die, my boo boo's about to have my baby. I think it's too late for praying. Hold up, her voice spoke to me and it slowly started saying. Bring your lifestyle to me, you'll make it better. And how long will I live? Eternal life and forever. Oh, will I be the G that I want? I'll make it like better than you can imagine. I'll make you dream of. So relax yourself. Let me take control. Close your eyes, my soul. My eyes are closed. 
out here doing these songs. You know, you're still on tour. I do, but I don't take it for granted. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I, mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh, and then in a world we can't see. That's when she was on Jimmy Kimmel's show, where she just, you know, said that she prays to Lucifer, or swears to Lucifer. Before yeah, well, sometimes they don't want to, and they're, you know, Gaga, we can't get, you know, the, the frequency's weird, and, you know, it's sounding a little bit strange, and I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad, and I'm like, if you don't get this right now, I swear to Lucifer, I'm gonna, you know, I get a little bit mad. Uh, reportedly, Lady Gaga, it's been confirmed by multiple friends and managers, someone has to sleep in the room with her, and she's tortured by demons. And, and, and thinks she's followed around by ghosts. Well, yeah, you're telling little girls to worship the devil. Bad right. stuff's going to happen to you. Exactly. <laughs> so they're admitting these things. These things are out there. People are just not taking it serious. This is actual demon possession. And they're going through rituals in front of millions of people in front of our Tony families. Blair admitted that he falls to the ground every morning and is possessed by the angel of light. This is mainstream news. Hmm. And he said, yeah, what's the big deal? And flops around on the ground. The devil's called the angel of light. I mean, All right, that was my comedy fucking debut. Satan, Satan, Satan. Inspiration for the Imagine Dragon songs come from demonic spirits, which are mostly given to them late at night in their dreams. Imagine Dragon singer Dan Reynolds admitted, after dark, my lyrics are boring. A lot of lyrics I have written have come from dreams and, of course, nightmares. This also explains the title of their album, Night Visions. Dan Reynolds also gets the inspiration for his songs from the voices of these demonic spirits. After interviewing singer Dan Reynolds, David Dunn of Jam Magazine said, Dan Reynolds isn't ashamed to admit he hears things others cannot. It has haunted his every waking moment for years. He doesn't like to talk about it much, but the voices in his head have become his constant companion. And when his inner muse speaks, the Las Vegas native is quick to take note. You see, this singer-songwriter's hearing problem always ends with a cleverly crafted lyrical landscape that delicately bounces out the sounds agitating his mind. Such is the price of genius. Even the name of the band, Imagine Dragons, says much about this group's demonic influence. A dragon is a demonic entity. It is the same serpent that is talked about in the Bible. And he, Jesus, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Revelation 20 and 2. And the devil that deceiveth them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, who shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Revelation 20 and 10. In Imagine Dragon's song, Demons, even though the melody of the song sounds harmless, the song has a dark meaning behind it. The song is about death, hell, demons, doom, and the coming judgment of God. Don't want to let you down, but I am hellbound. Oh, this is all for you. Don't want to hide the truth. Hip-hop goes God. Keeps going God. Celebration of death, darkness. What did Alistair Crowley say? Magic. Open you up. Put a spirit in you. Change who you are. Look at the cover story in Rolling Stone. A woman possessed. 
This article says Beyonce is gripped by a spirit so powerful it even has a name. A powerful spirit? A spirit in her to be worshipped by men and women? How many Christians went to her concert? Look at them. Look at the difference. Look at this. Is that the same woman? She says it's not. She's openly telling you that there is a spirit in her working in her when she's performing. So the times you know her, you're entertaining a spirit or entertained by a spirit. Yeah, true definition of entertain, detain so something can enter you. When they meet me and they speak with me, they're expecting Sasha. And um, I'm really kind of shy, and not really shy, but more reserved and um, nothing like Sasha. But I guess I wouldn't be very entertaining on stage. So Sasha comes out <laughs> and she's fearless. You know, she can, she can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. Right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me. Her name is Taylor Momsen, and you may know her as little Cindy Lou Who in How the Grinch Stole Christmas, or the star of the teenage drama Gossip Girl, uh, now turned satanic singer with her band The Pretty Reckless, uh, with her new album coming out titled Going to Hell. I'm going to hell, she says. Uh, the... Star also has such great singles as Make Me Wanna Die and Kill Me. And here she is in a photo shoot for FHM Magazine wearing a clear satanic t-shirt with Baphomet on it. Oh, wait, that's just not enough for you? Oh, here she is wearing a shirt that says that she'll bleep you for Satan. Yeah, she likes wearing that. She's such a, <laughs> such a loosey-goosey, such a floozy that she'll just bleep you for Satan there. Um... Here is a still from her new music video, I'm Going to Hell. <laughs> That's what she says. At least she's telling you the truth. In some but this respect. is Jay-Z, and he had an album called The Black Album, and of course these guys release songs, you know, underground, and they do this kind of stuff, and we just happen to come across a very disturbing song by Brother Jay-Z. It's a song that he actually recorded and has a backwards message in it and we have to reverse the song and play the song backwards to get this message for you. Y'all remember back when the heavy metal folks used to do that and they would put the backwards max messages in their music and they'd say that your subconscious was smart enough, that right brain was smart enough to decode and flip that message so by the time it got to the left side of your brain you understood it and you didn't even know you understood it, you just acted it out because they had the song called Another One Bites the Dust, Queen. Played it backwards and said, I like to smoke marijuana. Yeah, and then they interviewed kids and kids say when they listen to it, they just want to get high. They just want to smoke weed and they had no idea that that message was being reversed in their minds and causing them to want to do that. Isn't that weird? God made us smart. Look at somebody and say, you smart? So I don't care what they say about you. <laughs> This brother has a very disturbing message in this song. I'm going to let y'all hear it. Can I let y'all hear it? Y'all listen. Six, six, six. Murder, murder, Jesus. Six, 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 murder, murder, Jesus. <laughs> this made you feel kind of funny, didn't it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's un.
Fancy always wears really cool outfits. It's always um, like it's always signing, and that's why we were doing this so we could be like Hannah Montana. Document put out 20 years ago. Um, by John, Dr. John Coleman in the book, The Story of the Committee of 300. Number six, to encourage and eventually legalize the use of drugs and make pornography an art form. My question is, does life imitate art or does art imitate life? If you're going to make pornography an art form and then make it an art form to whom? Your little babies, my little babies? How does that work? It was like a nightmare. I was down in Galveston two weeks ago on a vacation. The last day I was there, a convention of, of cheerleaders came, but it was little kids at a competition, and there were like 10-year-olds dressed like prostitutes everywhere, and they were being rude to my daughters because they thought they were there for the competition. And, I mean, I was it was freaking me out. In fact, we even came home a day early. I, I mean, the, people are training their daughters to be whores. I'm not talking really about backwards masking, I'm talking really about backwards messages. In fact, one way to do it, which wouldn't require demons or higher intelligences to intercede, would be just to take straight words, take seven or eight words in a song, and reverse them. And then when you played it backwards, you would hear those words. But when you heard it forwards, what would you hear? You'd hear something backwards. It wouldn't make sense. So when people talk about how backwards masking is done in the studio, yeah, that kind of backwards masking is done in the studio. No problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when you hear music and lyrics forward, and then you hear those same lyrics backwards, and it's a message forward, and those same words are a message backwards. Okay? And we're not talking about one or two words. We're not talking about something like the cat and playing it backwards and trying to get something like tack backwards and something out of the... We're talking about sometimes over 15 words straight. We're talking on Stairway to Heaven right around 30 words. Okay? And we're not only talking about that, we're talking about a song that wasn't engineered to be heard backwards, but came right from the spirit world automatically. Okay? And then we're talking about if you wanted to make lyrics backwards on a song, you're going to mess up that song forward pretty bad, right? Well, Stairway to Heaven is the most popular song in rock and roll. So this, this destroys any kind of argument that, that comes against it. And what destroys it more is the lyric forward often has everything to do with the lyric backwards. And to take it even further, you can hear a lot of these same things on live albums backwards. Because it's the demonic spirits using these human beings. Do you understand that? So let's listen to it. Remember, first of all, that they were invoking Satan, that they got it from Satan. And listen to what you hear backwards. Forward. Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Forward it says, and your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Backwards it says, because I live with Satan. Listen carefully. Raise your hands if you heard that. Quite clear, quite obvious. There's a lot more. Backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. Did you hear that? Listen carefully. It says, I want to live it backwards like the Zep whose power is Satan. Did you hear that? Then it says, He will give you, give you 666. was that I got seven years in which the devil would give me anything I wanted. He'd given me wine, women, song, dope, power, you name it, I'd have it. Then at the end of those seven years, he got to kill me and take me to hell. What a deal. Anybody want to sign up? Yeah, you see, you got to understand something. The satanic doctrine here is that hell is not what we believe it is or what the Bible teaches it is. The satanic doctrine is that hell is this incredible party. Jim Morrison, too, was into a Lester Crowley. And right here, I want to show you a uh, picture on the back of one of his albums. And here you see Jim Morrison 
And under him you see a little statue of a Lester Crowley. And Jim Morrison, too, was into demonism and admitted that he was possessed by spirits. Over and over again, not only in rock music, but people in Hollywood, all over who are being called by Satan into his army. Okay, Oprah Winfrey said she was lonely and out of it until she came in contact with the, the universal hum. Okay, you see it over and over and over and over again. And I tell you right now, people in high places are being used by spirits to suck the world into the new age under Antichrist. And it's not just in rock music. That just happens to be what we're exposing today. In fact, your head is humming, and it won't go in case you don't know. The piper is calling you to join him. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? The lady that started off the tune, the lady that thought all that glitters was gold. Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? And did you know your stairway lies on the whispering wind? Where's the whispering wind? Remember we talked about that? Remember that was the piper's past. And it's whispered that soon if we all call the tune, then the piper will lead us to reason. So he's basically telling this woman that she is going to hell. Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Where does your stairway lie? So, if I said to uh, somebody, hey, your stairway lies in the whispering wind, I'd basically be telling them that they're going to hell because the whispering wind was the piper's path, as we've already sung. Now, before we go to the, the lyrics backwards and look at Stairway to Heaven backwards, which I think we should, I want to show you something in a bootleg by Led Zeppelin where they actually changed the words to this song. They were, this, that was at Madison Square Garden, what you had seen right there. First of all, before we go to it backwards and before we show the bootleg, I want to open it up and I want to show you what it looks like on the inside of Stairway to Heaven. And what you see is a woman, which she probably can't see from back there because she's in black, she's not shining white light at all, and she's climbing a mountain. Does it look like it leads to heaven? Looks like it leads to outer darkness to me, okay? In fact, the one who's leading her is a hermit of the tarot cards. The tarot cards are, uh, are occultic cards to, to divine the future for occultists and people in the New Age movement and so forth. Crowley had his own deck of uh, tarot cards that he designed. The hermit from the tarot cards represents uh, occultic wisdom, occultic guidance. Who's the one that is guiding the occult, ultimately? Satan. Satan. Whose path is she really on? Satan's. In fact, just as Jimmy Page, you had seen right there, was invoking Satan, a little bit later in that same song, just a few minutes if we would have kept going, he becomes one with the hermit. His face blends in one with the hermits, who rep is a representation of Satan, ultimately. Because he was invoking Satan in that ritual. Now it's interesting that really the piper is, lead is, is Satan. In fact, when we listen to the song, and we're still not going to listen to it backwards yet, but when we listen to the song forward, I want you to catch something, just a, a little part of it, very interesting. What I want to ask you is what kind of music do you hear? Grab that up a little. We hear an acoustic guitar. But what kind of instrument do we hear in the back of that acoustic? The pipe. The piper. The most powerful song of all time in rock and roll history, the biggest classic, has the piper that they identify as Satan, that is identified as Satan, I should say, leading the people that are in the kingdom of rock and roll. And guess what? I was a Led Zeppelin fanatic. And I had no idea because I was blinded. Because people are being blinded by this, you guys. But I've been set free by the Lord Jesus Christ who breaks these chains of deception. And you can be set free too. In fact, uh, we said earlier, the whispering path we saw was Satan's path. And then we're, we see her being told, Dear lady, can you hear the wind blow? The pipe. And did you know your stairway lies in the whispering wind? I mean, you're going to hell. Now, Led Zeppelin at the LA Forum, they tell their fans basically where they're going. Okay, listen very carefully. Dear who? Tells them their stairway lies on the whispering wind. He just told them they're all going to hell, and at the end of the concert, they don't know what's going on, 
So look how Robert Plant says goodbye to his fans. He just told them they're going to hell. They don't get it. They're cheering Led Zeppelin fanatically. And he tells them that they've been, it's been a joke, basically. Listen carefully. <laughs> Good night. I've seen them do that over and over again in their music. Kind of laugh at, at, laugh at the crowd. In fact, right here, let's look at Stairway from another angle. Let's look at it from the angle in which uh, Satanists are looking at it and see what they're actually finding. Now, there's a few different ways to look at backwards masking, and uh, there's different types of what people call backwards masking. I'm not talking really about backwards masking. I'm talking really about backwards messages. In fact, one way to do it, which wouldn't require demons or higher intelligences to intercede, would be just to take straight words, take seven or eight words in a song, and reverse them. And then when you played it backwards, you would hear those words. But when you heard it forwards, what would you hear? You'd hear something backwards. It wouldn't make sense. So when people talk about how backwards masking is done in the studio, yeah, that kind of backwards masking is done in the studio. No problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when you hear music and lyrics forward, and then you hear those same lyrics backwards, and it's a message forward, and those same words are a message backwards. Okay? And we're not talking about one or two words. We're not talking about something like the cat and playing it backwards and trying to get something like tack backwards and something out of the. We're talking about sometimes over 15 words straight. We're talking on Stairway to Heaven right around 30 words. Okay? And we're not only talking about that, we're talking about a song that wasn't engineered to be heard backwards, but came right from the spirit world automatically. Okay? And then we're talking about if you wanted to make lyrics backwards on a song, you're going to mess up that song forward pretty bad, right? Well, Stairway to Heaven is the most popular song in rock and roll. So this, this destroys any kind of argument that, that comes against it. And what destroys it more is the lyric forward often has everything to do with the lyric backwards. And to take it even further, you can hear a lot of these same things on live albums backwards. Because it's the demonic spirits using these human beings. Do you understand that? So let's listen to it. Remember, first of all, that they were invoking Satan, that they've got it from Satan. And listen to what you hear backwards. First we'll hear a little bit forward. Listen carefully. Raise your hand if you heard anything right away. Okay, that was without me even telling you anything. I've seen a lot of hands go up. Forward. Your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Forward it says, and your stairway lies on the whispering wind. Backwards it says, because I live with Satan. Listen carefully. Raise your hands if you heard that. Quite clear, quite obvious. There's a lot more. Her stairway lies in the whispering wind, dear lady, just like the Led Zeppelin fans, because they, because their power is Satan. They live with Satan. That's, their, that's who empowers them, and they're following Led Zeppelin. They're really following Satan, because Led Zeppelin were just four puppets. Satan could have used any four and formed Led Zeppelin. It was Satan's music. Let's listen on. Backwards it says the piper's calling to join him, or forward. Backwards it says the Lord turned me off. Raise your hands if you heard that. Forward it says, and it makes me wonder. Backwards it says there's no escaping it. Raise your hands if you heard that. Okay, it's quite obvious, and it's quite clear. You'd have to turn your ears off not, to not hear it, okay? It's really obvious what's going on here. Now, there is an escape. It says there's no escaping it. There is an escape, and that's Jesus Christ. In fact, he's the only escape. He's the only escape. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said, if you try to climb up some other way, he won't make it. He says the same as a thief and a robber. He alone, he said, is the gate. And if you want life, it's in him. And if you go some other route, 
According to the scriptures, you're still following Satan. You can't pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You can't do it through Buddha. You can't do it through Muhammad. They're both still in their graves. Jesus has risen from the dead, and he's coming back again, and you better be ready. Let's listen on. But listen backwards again, and I'm not going to say anything. And just listen, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you heard something before I even say anything. if you heard anything. I see hands all over the place, okay? Now listen to this forward. Forward, it, there's, you're talking about several words, like around uh, 17 words or so. actually talking about more than 17 there. Listen carefully. But what forward is talking about the two paths you can take, okay? Yes, there are two paths you can go by. Backwards, they lift up, the demons lift up, because this isn't Led Zeppelin, this is spiritism, and spirits working through Robert Plant. Backwards, they lift up the backwards path, the satanic path. It says, backwards, here's to my sweet Satan, I want to live it backwards, like the Zepp, referring to Led Zeppelin. Robert Plant referred to Led Zeppelin as the Zepp over and over again in interviews, and that's how they've been referred to for years. So backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan, I want to live it backwards, like the Zepp, whose power is Satan, he will give you, give you 666. Listen carefully. Backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. <laughs> hear that listen carefully it says I want to live it backwards like the Zep whose power is Satan did you hear that then it says he will give you give you 666 not much into my albums anymore so he will give you, give you 666. Big deal. The mark of the beast will come out. People will take it on their right hand or on their forehead. And then all of a sudden, they'll get grievous sores on their right hand. And they'll say, hey, what's going on? It's not working. There's some kind of reaction to this mark. And then before you know it, according to Revelation 14, everybody that takes the mark of the beast will be damned in fire and brimstone, it says, forever. And the smoke of their torment rises up forever and ever. Big deal. It's a big deal in this sense. The people that take the mark of the beast, the people that are rejecting Jesus right now are not going to make it into God's kingdom. And we need to reach people and say, hey, the scriptures say, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We need to turn to him wholeheartedly. Where are you turning at this time? Who are you following? Not to follow Jesus is to follow Satan, according to the word of God. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. Where are you at? Led Zeppelin is obviously satanic. Are you following him? Or are you following? I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. I was the manager of Zodiac Productions, which Zodiac Productions' name has been changed since then. I'm not even sure what they call it now, but it's the largest music conglomerate in the world. It owns RCA Records, Columbia Records, Motown Records. It owns almost all the concert booking agencies in the United States. And that's not even the the name of the company that owns it. The name of the company that owns it is Brenner Enterprises, and Brenner Enterprises is owned by Chase Manhattan. Chase Manhattan's owned by Standard Oil, and Standard Oil's owned by the Lords of London. You can track it on back. You kind of get the idea after a while. But I was the managing president of Zodiac Productions. It was one of my jobs as being one of these 13 people. Thus, I got to know many of the people who produce music and sing the music and play the music that you play. Now, one of the closest friends that I got during that time that I obtained was a man named David Crosby, Crosby Still Nash and Young. And I saw David the day before Christmas last year, talked with him. I got him away from this witch that he had with him. He told her to go shopping. We were in West Hollywood, and I was witnessing around to people I knew. We went off in this store, and we started talking. I said, David, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. I said, I already know the answers, but I've been gone for five years. I'd like to know 
certain things are still the way they were when I left. I said, do they, now I'll have to explain some of this when I'm done, because you're not going to understand it all unless you know something about music. I said, do they still take the master to the temple room? Dave said, yeah. I said, do they still have the colon conjure demons into the master? He said, of course. I said, now, i got to know something. What's the main reason for rock music? He said, come on, Lance, you know what the reason is. I said, please, David, I don't want to guess. Tell me what the main reason is. He said, the same as when you were in, so that we can place spells on people that we couldn't cast spells upon. I'll explain what that means in a minute. I said, okay, one last thing. I've been hearing that you must be an initiated witch now to get a record contract. He said, that's right. He says, many of us that weren't total witches have to be witches now in order to produce music. I said, thank you. The master is a tape about as big as the top of this podium that looks like an overgrown eight track that the album is cut on and it's placed in a machine that produces and presses the records and the eight tracks and cassettes that you buy. After it's been recorded, it's taken in. This is why a master's cut months in advance before it's released. On the full moon, it's taken in to a temple room about the size of this auditorium that is in every one of the major music companies behind locked doors up in the executive offices. And it's placed on an altar sitting in the north of the room and a pentagram engraved in the floor. And 13 hand-chosen witches and witch wizards and a coven come in and conjure a principality or a power up, usually Regia or something like that, and order him to tell the demons under him to follow every record and every tape coming off of that master. As I tell many Christian parents, you can go home and count your kids' records, probably yours too, and count how many demons at least are there. If that's too hard for you to believe, I'm sorry. That's why they do it. Now listen to me. This is why rock music is addicting. Have you ever seen kids that got rid of their music? They go around like this. They can't wait to find a rock station somewhere and they sneak off just like getting a cigarette or a fix because it's addicting. That's why they can't give it up. The rest of the conversation was this. You can't cast a spell on a Christian, but you can get a Christian to cast a spell on themselves. If you give the permission for the spell to work, being a Christian won't block it. And rock music is not just a song. It is supernatural music that which is carefully designed by their spirit guides or familiar spirits in the form of spells. Now, although the devil's music's par is the music and God's music is the words, much of the songs are written in what we call witch language. Give you kind of an idea. You talk, on, many of you talk on a CB, unless you know what, you, what a smoky is, and uh, a tin four, and uh, uh, a front door and back door and rocking chair and these type of things, you don't know what you're talking about. Same with witches. When you're in the first and second level, you have to learn over 2,000 words that said by anybody else means something totally different than when you say them. Elton John has said he's never written a song or sung a song that wasn't in which language. Now, I want to show you something. See how many kids in here will be honest and adults. How many remember and have heard at least several times a song called Hotel California? Somebody tell me what it meant. Quickly, somebody tell me what it meant. Huh? That's pretty close. But from the words, what did it mean? Well, that's more of a guess. See, most people can't tell you. That's why when people do drugs and they listen to songs in which language, they get some of the meaning. But most of the time, they can't tell you. Stop and think how many songs are out there that you really like and you don't have any idea what the person was talking about. Beyond the Yellow Brick Road, how about The Destroyer by Kiss? Can anybody tell me what it's about? Kiss said in it, kids, tell your parents. They're talking about Helder Skelter. Beatles sung Helder Skelter in which language nobody knew what it meant. Manson did because he belongs to the process. Helder Skelter is a several, several thousand year old word. Most of the music is either about Helder Skelter or a place called the Night Winds, which is what Hotel California is about, and different doctrines of witchcraft. You listen to them, your parents let you listen to them, and they have no idea. Kiss openly bragged how they were gaining control of people through their music because the people played their music. They told how they didn't form their own group. Their church, because they were ordained ministers of the Satanist church, placed them together. And that's how most of the music is done. David Crosby, when him and Crosby, still nice and young, produced the record Two-Way Street. They ordered the Principality of Medit to order demons of rebellion to go into the record, and everybody that heard it would be rebellious against law and order and government. And it was one of the reasons for the great upheaval in the 60s was that one album. And they take open credit for it. Roman is 
a crazy boy who lives in me and he says the things that I don't want to say. <laughs> he was born, you know, just a few months ago. I think he was born out of rage. He was conceived in rage. So he bashes everyone. He threatens to beat people and he's violent. That must be nice to have like an ignorant loudmouth who you can just sort of blame every... He wants to be blamed. I don't want to blame him. I, I, I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People have brought him out. People conjured him up. Now he won't leave. <laughs> Yo, Roman's revenge is just about taking control, saying Roman is here to stay. And anybody that ever doubted Roman is going down in a coffin. God is in control, don't you worry. Who are you? Who are you? The keeper? So, you are not explaining. He says, now, necromancy is in reality a belief, a religious belief. People believe that the dead have entered into a higher state of existence than they had when they were alive. Also, that they are in a position and have the capacity to help the living here on Earth. See? Then he said, it's, he says, this is where things get really interesting. He said, according to the great master, a person does not have to supposedly call upon the spirits of the dead to receive help, you see, to be involved in the necromancy. All he needs to do is to believe in life after death. Because he said, necromancy is the belief that man is human, uh, as a human being, as an as immortal soul. So anybody that believes that man has an immortal soul is involved in necromancy. And you take, for instance, like uh, Loretta Lynn. She owes, she says on national television, and uh, I have the data on it, that, that, that I heard it myself. She said that she was made successful in her singing career by a dear friend of hers. It was the same age as she and died when she was 18 years of age. And Loretta was trying to get into the, the singing world, you know, but it, it, it would, she says, I had no success at all. Until one night I was sitting in bed reading a book. And she says, who walks right through the wall but my, my friend, the spirit of my friend. And she says, Loretta, I'm going to make you a very famous person in singing Western uh, country music. And I will be with you all the time. Trust me. She said, her voice went through me, the power. And you saw this in a television documentary? Tele yeah. Yeah. So this was, I believe, 1976 it took place. Now, the priest explained that when people believe in uh, this business, they are actually opening themselves to be completely deceived by demon spirits because it gives the demon spirits an opportunity to impersonate the dead. So, who are they talking to? He says, the friendly demon spirits 
They have always found over the centuries great delight in impersonating in apparitions, departed loved ones, and persons of great renown. And they always praise the, the great master, Satan, as a super intelligent being that he is. Beautiful to behold. And if he ever appears to you, you won't be able to look upon him because it'll be too bright. And the spirit appeared to him, and he said it was, the spirit was, the angel was so bright that he could not look upon him. Christian God is trying to get our attention because we are at war. But against principalities. Against powers. Paul tells us, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see yes, another sir. law in my members. I'm warring against the law. Warring yes, against sir. us. Folks, we are in against a constant war. In the darkness of this world. 
The only way we're going to find victory in this war is if we put to death the deeds of the flesh. We must get rid of sin in our life. Dearly beloved, the Lord says, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from flesh and lust, which war against the soul. We have the ability to grieve and quench the spirit. In essence, let me put it in focus for you. We have the ability to halt the work of God in our life and to humiliate God. God forbid we ever do. Against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Seeking whom he may devour. How do we win? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against the methods of the devil. Some of us try to do it on our own righteousness, but our righteousness is as filthy rags. We're going into the battle defenseless against a formidable foe who seeks to devour us, who is the father of lies and the deceiver and the accuser. Wherefore, we must take upon ourselves the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all, Christian, we must stand. energy, thoughts, words, ideas, and music affect the molecular structure of water. Please remember that water comprises over 70% of a mature human body and covers the same amount on our planet. Water is the very source of all life. This photo shows the beautifully formed geometric design of the Yushit Spring water. This next photo is from the Shimanto River, the last clean spring in Japan. Notice the extraordinary geometric forms. The fact that the molecular structure of water can be affected by our consciousness, our intent, and our sounds is extremely important. This photo is from the Mount Cook Glacier in New Zealand. Mr. Moto has been visually documenting these molecular changes in water by means of his photographic techniques. He freezes droplets of water, then examines them under a dark field microscope that has photographic capabilities. His work clearly demonstrates the diversity of the molecular structure of water and the effects of the environment upon the structure of the water. This photo is from the fountain. Lourdes, France. This photo is from contaminated water from the Yodo River in Japan. In this photo we can compare the contaminated water with clean stream water. Look at the difference. Mr. Omoda decided to see what effects music would have upon the structure of water. He placed distilled water between two speakers for several hours while playing different music and then photographing the crystals that formed after the water was frozen. This photo is of water being exposed to Beethoven's Pastorale. This photo is the effect of box air for the G-string on the water. This photo is water exposed to Chopin's farewell song. This next photo is water being exposed and affected to music that was designed for healing. This photo is of water being exposed to the Kawachi folk dance. This photo shows the effect of heavy metal music upon the water. Here now we can compare the effects of healing versus heavy metal music and what happens to the water molecules. 
Mr. Omoto decided to see how thoughts and words affected the formation of untreated distilled water crystals by typing words onto paper and then taping this paper onto glass bottles overnight. This photo shows the effects of the words, thank you. This next photo shows the effects of the words, love and appreciation. This photo shows the effects of the words, you make me sick, I will kill you. And here we can compare the effects of thank you with the you make me sick, I will kill you. Very, very different geometric forms being incurred through the intention. Now this photo is of a very polluted and toxic water from the Fujiwara Dam. Here now is the same water from the Fujiwara Dam after a Buddhist monk had offered a prayer over it. Prayer, that sound coupled with intention, seems to have an extraordinary ability of restoring water to its natural, harmonious, geometric symmetry. And in this photo we can compare the toxic water and then the effects of praying over the water. It's really quite impressive. These photographs that we have just seen show proof that not only does sound have the ability of affecting and changing physical structure, but that with regard to the molecular structure of water, that our intent with our sound is extremely important. This may have great implications for the future of both personal and planetary harmony and healing. To what extent is water capable of picking up information? What does it perceive? And how does it remember it over time? The Aerospace Institute in Stuttgart has discovered a relatively simple way of making the structure of a drop of water visible. The researchers have had their efforts rewarded by insights into a very beautiful world. Each drop has a face of its own, unmistakable and unique. Why are the individual drops so different from one another? We got a lot of people to come to a lecture hall here at the Institute, gave them all the same water, had them make drops at exactly the same time, collected all the drops and then discovered that each individual produced different images from the same water. And here you can see the results. Here on the right you can see that the images of the individual students are different, but those made by a given student are all quite similar. This is the work of the first experimenter, this one here from the second, this from the third, and this from the fourth. Individually they can quite easily be reproduced, but you would never have thought that they were all from the same water, because when you compare the images from the different people, you see some big differences. Then we undertook experiments to find out whether things changed when we put something into the water. A real flower was placed in the water. A while later we took a drop of water, and here you can see one of the pictures. And you can see it in this picture. It's the typical image you get when you put a flower into water. You could recognize the flower in every single drop in this glass, of course. That can be reproduced and has significance. And if you were to put a different flower in here, for example, the Sweet William flower, then all the drops of this water would look like Sweet William. Okay, rice experiments. Actually, maybe this should be called the consciousness experiment, because that's what this is about. Okay, so obviously these are just uh, little glass jars with lids, all washed up. And then here is some cooked rice. Not much, because the rest of it is in my tummy. Now, uh, this is going in here. One spoonful in there. There they go, two little glass containers of rice. Love and hate. So, I'm going to take the love, we'll stick this one. Actually, we'll stick it across the top, there like that, look. Love, hate. Every day. 
for the next month. I'm going to love this rice. Send it some love. Just think love. And with this rice, I'm going to think hate, horrid, hate it, evil rice. That's going to be the only difference between these two identical containers of rice, apart from the word and the intention. Day three, fennel seed, still fine. The love rice, still completely fine. As is the hate rice, nothing to report, no changes. Still no change, day four, see you tomorrow. Okay, so this is day five, and I think you can see on the hate rice, blue mold. Uh, you can see that, it's started to mold, day five. Day six, and you can see the mold grow in there on the hate rice. Look at that. Day seven, day eight, day nine, the effects of thought on reality. The difference between these two pieces of rice now that one has got bad negative energy going to it and one's got love, good energy. The impact of consciousness on reality. Day 10. Day 11. So this is day 13. I dropped this little jam jar of rice, but I think you can see that's gone really bad. It's gone disgustingly bad. Liquid on the bottom. And there's this rice. This, honestly, still looks good enough to eat. 13 days of love and 13 days of negative energies. If this is what happens to rice, what happens to you when you have good or bad thoughts?